I'm just waiting for everyone to get up on here today. We're going to wait for everyone. Everyone in the name of Jesus. There we go. All right, I'm just waiting for everyone to get up on here. Mm -mm -mm. I remember that verse. I remember. I remember that verse. <laughs> All right. All right. We're going to go into the addiction today. We're going to be talking about how to overcome them in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we have all kinds of addiction, all kinds of things that are hindering us from, the, uh, from God and who to be with and how, and how we uh, uh, overcome these things. Um, but first, we're going to go into prayer. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to watch over all your people. Guide them. Protect them, Lord. Anybody going through any kind of uh, hardship with, with financial problems, Lord. People that are, are dealing with uh, uh, food shortages, Lord. They're not able to come, uh, help their families. Um, watch over them, Lord. Guide them and protect them, Lord. Um, let them know that there is no other God but you, Jesus. And show them you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Also, we're going to pray another prayer the way Jesus wants us to pray. Uh, you got your Bibles out? We're going to go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and 13. Matthew 6, verse 9, uh, chapter 6, verse 9 through 13. And this is how Jesus Christ commanded us to pray. So this is how we're going to pray. And it says, After this man, uh, uh, our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Today give us the, the day of our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, and forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So, so we got that. Uh, we're going to go into uh, addiction um, and how to overcome them. Um, there's many addictions out there, from porn to, to, uh, 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 to lust, to fornication, to adultery, to pills, to drugs, to alcohol, and many other ones of the flesh. All right? Um, and these type of things are hindering us from God. Which they are called sins. Alright. God said no drunken person will make it to heaven. No drunks. And that ain't just and it ain't just alcohol. But um usually when somebody going through these type of things, they're having some kind of hurt going on inside their heart. Um they trying to take away the pain that's in their heart, so they use certain things to uh to uh uh to 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 uh, uh what is it called um to heal their heart because it's hurting right now so they they find to find out all kinds of things which uh, they can use and, and 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 when you get done doing these things it's just the same hurt over and over again it's like a a revolving cycle over and over and over again um never run it's like it's like you're running from your problems almost uh, usually you got a lot of problems and you use these certain things uh, and, and again after you done drinking after you done smoking after you done doing this next thing you know that that problem's still there so uh, what you're doing is uh, the devil's attacking you with these certain things um, the devil wants to keep us in sin um, don't cower away from this fight. All right? Keep pushing through. Don't give up. 
Um, don't let the devil put these crazy things in your mind to where you say, he's telling you that you ain't never going to be able to overcome these addictions. You ain't never going to be able to do this or that. Don't listen to that, man. If I listen to the devil right now, I probably already killed myself already. I mean, that's how that's how the devil wants. He want to kill. He only come to kill, destroy, destroy families, destroy your lives, destroy your kids' life. He coming to he coming to uh, push depression. He coming to push all kinds of devil spirits down your throat from lusting after women. Uh, same thing with uh, women lusting after men. Um, that's just what he does. You gotta fight for this stuff, man. You gotta get out your you gotta get out your thing and, and fight the devil. You can't let the devil win. You can't listen to him either. You're listening to a liar. You ever get those thoughts in your head talking about depression, talking about this or that? That's the devil, man. Giving you doubts in your mind, giving you all kinds of crazy things that come in your mind. You wonder where did this come from? Why am I feeling this way today? It's the devil. You got to call upon the name of Jesus for help. Even the, I mean, I want y'all to understand this. Everyone goes through temptations in life. Everyone. Don't let nobody fool you. Talking about they ain't, they ain't been through the, uh, 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 certain things in life. Uh, to where they're getting tempted to do things that sin against God. Everyone does. <coughs> Uh, the devil goes after the mind. The devil wants to control the mind. If he can get the mind, he can get anything he wants. And then you got people that try, that try to trust their hearts and what their hearts say. Don't ever trust your heart. Your heart is wicked. You want to trust up, you get in this word, you start trusting God. Uh, sin is where, heart, uh, uh, where the uh, sin starts is from the heart. But, um... You gotta endure these temptations, and, and you gotta find a way to get out of that tempta temptations. I'm gonna show you. Uh, if we go to James, James chapter one. Let's go to James chapter one. We're gonna start at verse twelve. No, well, let's start at verse 11. No, 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 verse 12. 12. Blessed is the man that endure temptations. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Let no man uh, say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. It's not God that's tempting you, it's the devil that's tempting you. All right? It's tempting you to sin. Um. For God can't be tempted with evil, neither tempted any he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away from with his own lust and enticed. Meaning you being drawn away through your own desires, your own worldly deepest desires. Um, whether it, whatever it is, whatever fleshly desire you got that you want, and all this other stuff, um, that's what that's what you're drawn away with. And when it says when you're drawn away with your lust and, and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived itself, conceived, it brings forth sin. Alright, so when you're facing after that worldly lust, that worldly things that you're trying to do, whether it be uh, porn, alcohol, weed, uh, pills, um, adultery, fornication, all that stuff is, is, is a, a sin. And when it is finished, it brings forth death. So it says in it says in the Bible it says in Romans six twenty three it says for the wages of sin is death, all right. So you want a, a way to a path of death, a path to where you ain't gonna be able to overcome this. I mean you're gonna uh, after you get to a, a certain amount of sins with God, He's gonna take you out. That's just the way it works. That's why we tell everybody overcome sin. It's the one thing that leads you to death, then hell. All right. And it says, do not err, beloved brethren. So, um, I want people to understand this too. Everyone gets tempted, all right? Even Jesus Christ got tempted. Uh, and that's God uh, by the devil. So, don't think that uh, we, uh, we, we're, spe uh, we're uh, God is putting us through something else. No, it's, it's, uh, uh. It's the devil, man. We 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 on full guard, full attack from the devil. 
It's our enemy. He wants us dead and he wants us in hell with him. And he, not, he, ain't, got nothing, he ain't got nothing against you. It's against God for kicking him out. So he hates you because you are made in the image of God. So he hates that. He hates everything about you, me, and all he wants to do is kill you and destroy you. Because it hurts God's heart for to send somebody to hell. Because he, he's the one that made you. God made you into what he wanted you to be. <coughs> we all got names. Probably, Man, he probably got pictures on the wall of us. You know what I'm saying? Just like a father would have, a, a family would have in his household. You know, your, your kids. That's what he probably got. Every one of us. So it, probably, it hurts him to send us to hell. And the devil knows that. Because he's mad at God for kicking him out. So, I mean, can you imagine such an arrogant spirit that you would tempt, you try to tempt Jesus Christ with his own kingdom? His own kingdom they try to, uh, the devil tempt him with. Jesus Christ. Saying, I'll give you all this stuff, all these things, man, if you just bow down to me and worship me, Jesus. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan, for it is written. Thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by every word of the mouth of God. So, Temptation, it comes with everyone. But when God makes a temptation, I mean, uh, when, when, when the devil comes with a temptation, uh, God makes a way for us to get out of it. If you go to 1 Corinthians, uh, uh, what is it? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 10, 10, 13, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. It says, there have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. It's common. Everyone's been tempted by the devil in some sort of fashion. It's common. But God is faithful. Jesus is talking to you. God is faithful. Endure it. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape. If we didn't go through temptation, we didn't go through these certain sins, we wouldn't have a, 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 a way to get, to get to God. We wouldn't even need God. That's why, you know, all these things is for a reason. You know, God made the devil for a reason. To bring us to God. To, 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 to trust in Him. Um, so also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men. Judge ye what I say. So, it's very, uh, 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 that's another, I forgot to put that one in there too. That's another uh, 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 devil temptation. Idolatry, where you fall in love with certain things. Um, whether it be basketball, sports, or uh, 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 whatever you're doing, hobby, whatever's taking you from the word of God, it's, it's, uh, it's idolatry to God. You know, that's why uh, uh, it's not just uh, graven images. Uh, idolatry is a whole bunch of things. Um, anything you're putting above God and His Word, that's idolatry to God. So, make sure you're in your Bible. Make sure you're learning what the Word of God says. Make sure all that. There's only one name that can save anybody. And that's Jesus Christ. Porn. Okay, so we're going to go into the temptations. It's porn. Lusting after a woman. Stop. If you're trying to overcome these things. You got to stop looking at women half naked on 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 the uh on the Instagram, on the uh TV, on the movies. These are all devil's traps to catch you in to get you to urge to sin. And then when you get to that certain sin, and when you get to these certain things, that's when the devil attacks even harder. You'll feel the urges to sin like never before. Because he's got your mind. Now he wants to get your mind to sin. All right? So you got to start blocking these things. You shouldn't be watching no half-naked women online. Uh, 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 uh. Man, I, I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, this is one of the things I really struggled with is, is, uh, as growing up. And, and uh, I had to learn. I had to stop watching that garbage. Uh, when people call my mom, man, you know, I couldn't tell you how many half-naked women the devil sends my way 24-7. I got to block. Anytime I see a woman that look that's got a breast out like that, cleavage, butt hanging out, anything like that, you getting blocked. I ain't got time for that. I can't have that around me. No disrespect to you, 
uh, 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 you just don't know what some of the people don't even know that they uh, uh, women know they know what they're doing. So I, I mean, it ain't, it ain't their fault. I just can't be around that stuff. Um, it's gonna lead me to sin. See what I'm saying? So you want to stay away from certain stuff like that, whether it be magazines, uh, TV, social media, movies. Like I said, any anything that stop that's uh, uh, where you know you're gonna uh, get the urge to sin and you're gonna want to do this, get away from it. Call upon the name of Jesus Christ when that happens. Fornication. When you see uh, 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 many of us, uh, many of us uh, men out there looking at uh, uh, will we'll look at a pretty woman and we thinking about having sex with her. I mean that's what that's how that's how crazy our minds think as men. You know we ain't even thinking about anything else. Oh well, she got a great mind. We don't care about none of that. We are superficial men. We go to the strip club and spend all our our, our dollar bills on went on on half on some breast and some butts. So that's where our minds are at. And, and like I said, it's sex twenty four seven. That's what we a uh, uh, mind of a man. And that's why a lot of women dress half naked for that certain reason because they're looking for attention from the man. Now, well, a lot of women will say, "Well, no, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't dressing like that." Yes, you are. Because if you if you didn't want attention from anybody, you would dress uh, modestly as God requires. And let, I want to make this clear to everyone. It's the uh, when you when a woman dressed half naked and a man looks at him and commits adultery with her uh, uh, because he couldn't control his eyes, that's the fault of both parties. It's not the fault of one party. It's the fault of both parties. That's why God commands a woman to cover up and and, 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 and tells a man to control his eyes. So they need to uh, understand that um, beauty is not on the outside. Beauty is, in, is skin deep. Um, my grandparents, they've been together for over 60, 70 years. And they was uh, uh, they had a successful marriage because they fell in love with each other. You know, they fell in love with each other's minds. They didn't fall in love with the with, with them dressing half naked because they didn't dress half naked back then. They didn't act a fool back then. Um, these programs they allow women to to be on 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 a program half naked. I mean, I'm talking maybe a a, a nipple a, a nipple sitting there uh, uh, hang, hanging out almost. I mean, it's disgusting with the way they done made these this these things now. You know, back then I was like, yeah, well, who, man, that's. That's what I've been waiting to see all day. Thank God for that. Now, man, now I'm looking at it. Well, you know what? That's something that's going to stop me from sinning, and I'm going to commit adultery with it. I need to turn this off. So it's, it's certain things that y'all need to look at and understand what y'all doing. Fornication, having sex before marriage is a sin, and it's a sin that leads to hell. You shouldn't be testing the products before you buy it because all you're doing is falling in love with sex, not with the love of the person. There's a reason to all this. If you go to 1 Peter, uh, one Peter chapter 2. One Peter chapter 2. And you go to uh, verse 11. Peter chapter 2, where are you? There we go. This is God speaking. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. So this is telling you to get away from fleshly lust. Stop falling in love with the lust, uh, lust of the flesh, and because it war against your soul. The devil is at war with us. All right. And if you go to Matthew 5, 28, if we go there real quick, and this is for the men. Because, you know, God talk about, uh, is talking to the men most of the time. Uh, Matthew 5, I think it's 5, 28. Now, if y'all know me, y'all know I done went over this a million times. But this is for the other people that wasn't there. All right? That wasn't able to, under, to wasn't, uh... Uh, uh, it's, it's brand new because you got to get them to understand this too. There's always new people. Um, 
So it says in verse 27, uh, Matthew 5, 27. Ye have heard when it has said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. As a married man, shouldn't be out there looking for another woman for sex. For chasing after the lust of the flesh. Need to stop that. That, that stuff is going to uh, 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 send you to hell. That's the, I mean, that, that following your lust, it leads you right off a cliff to hell. I'm here to tell you. Ye have heard it said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. And you see all these people committing adultery 24-7. Some men, I used to be like this uh, myself. I, I was a dog. I used to sleep with a lot of women in my day. I was a whoremonger, as God puts it. Um, and, uh... Uh, I was. It was like a challenge to me to have sex with a different woman every other day. That's how bad it was for me. I ain't scared to admit this. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and I know God punished me for all this stuff that I did back then. Um, so I, uh, uh, I was chasing out the women, having sex. I was having sex with married women. I looked at it like a challenge. That's how bad it was for me. So I understand y'all pain, man. So don't act like I ain't here listening to what you're saying. All right? Because I've been through it myself and I overcame it. So don't tell me that you can't overcome it. But I say unto you that whoever look at a woman. This is Jesus speaking again. Ye have heard when it's. I'm sorry. But I say unto you that whoever look on a woman to lust after her. Have committed adultery with her already in her heart. God says no adulterer will make it to heaven. No. No fornicator. These are what Jesus Christ were. I don't care if you're a believer or unbeliever. People tend to think, well, I'm saved by grace, so I can keep sinning. You're a fool for saying that. You go on, you on the, you're on the way to hell. The devil gonna send you straight to hell with that thought, thinking. If it was that easy to get into heaven, everybody would be in there. But that's not the case. God said most people will be on the road to destruction, to hell, because they're not able to overcome these and they're attacked by the devil 24-7. It's not just one adultery like it was back in the day where you just, if you was married, you were sleeping with somebody else. That meant that you wasn't in adultery. Uh, that, that was adultery. Jesus changed it up and added another thing to it. But I say whoever look at a woman with lust have committed adultery already in their heart. So if you looked at a woman with lust, you have had sex with her in your heart. And those sins on judgment day are going to show up. That's why it's so important to repent for these sins and stop this stuff, man. And if thy right eye offend thee, now this is Jesus Christ speaking again. And if thy right eye, if your eyes offend thee, pluck it out, cast it, it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one member should perish, going to hell, one of your members go to uh, hell, than for your whole body to go to hell. I'd rather be in heaven with no eyes, I mean, eh, 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 I mean, uh, uh, one eye, than, than, than uh, on my arm, you know, then I would have going to hell. I mean, I've been questioning some of this stuff. I'd be like, you know what, Lord, I don't think I can overcome this. What should I do? And I'm, th and I'm reading this right here, what it said. Cast it into hell. And if they right hand offend thee, there it goes again. Cut it off. And cast it from thee. It is profitable for thee that one of their members should perish and not the whole body that should be cast into hell. Now, it's, imp it's important. God is just showing you the importance. He ain't telling you to just do that, cut your hand off, do that, you know, because it tells you not to, uh, to uh, 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 dismember your, bo your body. So it's talking about, it's just warning you, letting you know that this is how big of a, 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 a warning this is. All right? He's telling you it is better to cut your hand off, it is better to cluck your eye out than to uh, uh, lust after a woman, to commit fornication with a woman, uh, to, to masturbate. Well, uh, you know what I'm saying? He's it, telling you this. And uh, now let's get into another uh, one pills. Listen, they try to, I mean, I done had five major surgeries on my stomach, all right? I'm talking about big major surgeries that keep you in, in the hospital for months. All right? 
Um, I don't have a I don't have a, 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 a colon no more. I don't have that no more. I had a disease that was killing me, and uh, 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 I sat in the hospital four or five months, not knowing if I was gonna die or live. Um, so, anybody that's been going through medical problems, I know all about them. And it's been the last six, seven years of my life, and that's when I started getting closer to God. So I knew. I mean, you're gonna go through things in life. It's for a reason. God is trying to teach you something. He taught me a lot through that. Uh, through all that I have now I got patience for people I didn't have patience back then um, I also fell in love with the material things stuff like that and, 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 and all kinds of things I was doing wrong I mean uh, uh, that I was doing and uh, God took all that stuff away so I mean he taught me new things in life so I, I take it as a blessing going through those type of problems um, but they want to give me a pill every other day. I mean, they want to get before I got out of there, they want to give me 12 pills a day. I ain't taking no 12 pills. I used to hide pills in the hospital. I used to hide them, hide them under my sheet, throw them in the trash, and they would uh, tell me I need to swallow these pills and I need to do this and that. And I ain't doing none of that. I don't know what's in them pills. I don't know what uh, 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 they want to drug me, put them. Uh, 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 I'm talking about. The good drug. I ain't talking about them little things. I'm talking about putting that drug in you, making you go to sleep. Kind of morphine kind of things. And, and, and that stuff was affecting my body. It was killing me. I remember uh, it got to a point to where they were putting so much in me that my body started rejecting it. So it's not for the body. These things ain't for the body. There's natural healers out there. Not, they don't tell you that. There's natural healers out there that God's already made. From plants to stuff like that. That God made for certain things. So these people are, are money hungry. Ain't nothing more corrupt in this world. Uh, 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 other than Wall Street. Than in the, in the hospital. These doctors don't care nothing about you. These nurses. They don't care about you at all. It's all the money. Uh, whoever didn't get to the many, many patients as they can. They only come for maybe one time a day. When, when I was in the hospital. They come there maybe one time a day. See, check, see, fit, and they come in there for 15 seconds. I'm trying to ask questions. They trying to get out. You know, it, it's like, well, 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 what are you here for? Do you really care about me? No, they don't really care about you. It's just another, another number for them. It's money to them. That's all they care about. And they're talking about giving you some kind of vaccine or you can't do this or that. No. No. I ain't taking no vaccine or no medicine or nothing like that that goes, listen. I ain't saying if you got to take a pill to live or a certain thing that you got to do with that. Okay, but you don't need to take pills. You don't need to take pills. It's, like I told you, there's natural healers out there. Anything that that, 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 that keeps you from not being sober or, or mind-altering, get away from them drugs. God said to be sober. Love the Lord thy God with your soul, your heart, and your mind. How can you love God if you can't even control it? They, they, they controlling your mind. You know what I'm saying? So it's one of those things where you got to get away from that stuff. That is not of God. Do not believe those liars in them hospitals. A doctor will write you a prescription for anything nowadays. Got all these people on pills. I'm mean, out reading one, one day and, and I heard Dr. Phil say it too. Um, he said, uh, uh, the thing said, that it was uh what what are those pills called where they uh what are those pills called where they uh not codeine what it I forget what they call big long name but it's all, all my uh uh those pills are the number one killer in in the world it, it, everything else other than abortions uh, where people are murdering children other than that them pills are number one in this world for killing uh, killing killing everybody. Man, them pills is not something of God. I don't care what nobody tell you. Um, drugs and weed. I, I, I was talking to, uh, yeah, it's something with oxycodone, uh, stuff like, I forget what it's called. But everybody takes the pill. It's some, uh, it's in the, it's in every, uh, mind to pill. Um, but I can't remember it now.
but everybody takes the it, it, it's something like that oxycodone so it's yeah it's something like that i'd have to look it up but he said that, i mean they're saying that that's the number one killer in this world in pills and uh uh drugs weed heroin all this stuff you putting in your mind because you going you got hurt in your 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 body your, your mind you've been hurt in your life you got to overcome this uh, uh 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 certain things um uh, I, I mean, I, I, I be, I'm telling you right now. Uh, excuse me. I, I got many people that that uh, that that, that are uh, uh, struggling with all kind of marijuana. That's one of the one things many, many many people think they can do because God made that. You know, so they feel like they can uh, uh, smoke that. It, it take com common sense to tell you uh, uh, smoke affects your body. I don't care whether a doctor or, or, or a nutritionist. I don't care about nothing what they got to say. They all liars to me. I ain't never met a doctor that ain't never lied to me before. That's how bad it's got with me. I can't even trust a doctor what they say. Because it's all about money at the end of the day for them. Just like with these politicians. It's all about money. Um, so, no smoking weed. All right. Um, I've been smoking weed my whole life, and I was trying to find Bible verses to try to cut, see if I can. Uh, uh, I was able to do it. I couldn't find one. I had no choice. Be like, well, you know what? I can't find nothing. I gotta go ahead and try to overcome this. And I and it took forever to try to overcome. I mean, the devil would. I, every time I tried to stop smoking weed, all of a sudden the devil would come out of nowhere. And then if I didn't have no weed, I had to have it. I mean, it was it was terrible life, man. I, I ain't had no money. I ain't had none of this stuff. And, 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 and I was isolating myself from others because of that. I mean, it's certain we not we not made. Our bodies are not made to be having all my all to reminding of things. Because what you're doing is giving the devil a little bit of access to your brain. And that's all he needs to get you to sin. That's all he needs. Let's say and, and one let's go to that real quick. One Peter. Come on. Come on, phone. What's going on with you? Doing me dirty today. One Peter. One Peter four eight. I'm gonna show you where the devil attacks when you're not sober. Now, I'm sure in other versions of the Bible, other people translations, they don't got the devil didn't try to move this verse out. I can guarantee you that. So check your other uh stay in the King James Version, y'all. It's saying in 1 Peter 4 8. In a book, I'm sorry. Is it 1 8 4 8? What is it? I'm sorry, 1 Peter 5 8, chapter 5 8. We'll go back to verse of uh, uh, chapter 4 in a minute. Be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. If you ain't never seen a lion when he hungry, he go, he going, he going after you. He going to chase you. You ever th think about that, man? A, a roaring lion, walking about, seeking who he may devour. Meaning, we think about we are gazelles, and he's the lion chasing us around, and he, and he hungry. So he pounces on you on the gazelle. The lion pounces on the gazelle when he's hungry, and 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 and, what, and that's what God is warning you how the devil is when we not sober. So that's why God said to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, your enemy, the devil, as a warring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour, devour, kill. That's what he that's what he wants to do because you know the wages of sin is death, y'all. If we go to uh, 1 Peter 4 8, I'm glad, uh, uh, 4 7, I'm sorry. And this is God speaking again. But the end of all things is at hand. That's what's going on now. That's why we got to be sober, because it's the end of the times. Everything will distract you from the Word of God. So that's why you got to be sober. It says, But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober. And watch unto prayer. Praying. Praying by when you're sober. Man, all day I pray, 24-7. And y'all think I'm joking? 
all day I pray about things. I'm talking about, and I'll just start praising God 24-7. I mean, I ain't, I ain't got time to be playing around the devil. I'm trying to keep the devil away from me. Because he's going he gonna to come after me most. I'm the one over here teaching the word of God. I, get a, I, I go through all kinds of temptations, all kinds of crazy things in life that I got I to gotta be uh, aware of. I mean, even dreams, I get some kind of w wicked dreams once in a while. That just come out of nowhere. And I done prayed these things away. So, we got a question. Hold on. Kurt, could you give me advice to repent? Yes. We repent about every sin we ever committed. Repentance without change means nothing to God. You got to repent for everything. I remember one verse in there in Luke where it talks about when we repent, the angels are rejoicing in heaven. Like a party going on. So repentance is a, uh, uh, you might not see it on, in, a, in a physical world, but in the spiritual world, repentance can change your whole life. God requires, I remember one of the things God told me to say, uh, 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 let's go to that real quick. I'm getting off track. But that's a great question to ask. It says in Acts 3.19, it says, Repent ye therefore and be converted. Be converted of your sins. That your sins may be blotted out. So it's a, it's a, it's a refreshing, a cleansing from all sin. Now, I ain't saying if you, if you stole today and you repent for it, and then you steal the next three days. That what, what does that repentance mean? It, it falls on deaf ears after a while. We can think about that. You repenting for stealing and you're stealing again. You repenting for smoking weed and you smoke weed again. You repent for all that uh, 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 liquor that you're drinking and lusting after women and then you do it again. Man, God requires us to change from these things. Man, repent ye therefore and be converted. That your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And this is God speaking in 2 Chronicles 7.14. Y'all should know this one. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. And turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. And will forgive their sins. So this is God telling you. Repentance without change means nothing to him. Then I will hear. If you in turn. If he will seek my face. And turn from my in your wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. And then I will forgive their sins. And 1 John 1 9 talks about. If we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Which is all sin. Meaning you repented for every sin you ever committed. He is just and faithful. Clean. That's what Jesus did on the cross for us. Giving us a way to make it to heaven. Not to be living and practicing in sin. 2 Peter 3 9. I mean uh, let's go to Luke 13 3. I tell ye yet nay. Which is no. Um, I'm sorry. Yes. I tell ye yes. But except ye repent. Ye shall all likewise perish. This is one of the th first things Jesus talked about when he was on, um, um, when he came into the world on his first sermon on the mount. It says, from the beginning, uh, say, uh, Matthew four seventeen, from the time Jesus began to preach and say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Man, and you could die tomorrow, and you ain't repenting. You're going to hell. In, in Proverbs twenty eight thirteen, he that confessed of his sins. Shall not prosper, but whoever confess and forsake them shall have mercy. We can keep going down the list on these. If you go to Acts 17 30, and the times of ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere, everywhere, all men to repent. God don't want nobody to perish. 
All right, the Lord is not slacking concerning the promise, as some men count slacknessness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any, not any, should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So repentance is a is a key. That's one of the second steps in order to secure your spot into heaven. Now back to topic. Drugs. Uh, 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 some, some of the addictions that we're seeing. Alcohol. Man, alcohol is killing people, man. Ephesians 5.18. Ephesians 5.18 And be not drunk with wine. Be not drunk with wine. Wherein is access, but be filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Can't be filled with the Holy Spirit. You out there being drunk? You filled with the devil. I remember one a person that told me this. I'll never forget it to this day. It was a pastor that told me. I told him, I said, I let this man into my house. He was, you know, he, I was trying to help him out and stuff, but he drank every day. He drank up in the morning. He always, he always drunk. He said, well, you let, you allowed the devil in your house. I said, well, you know what? You're right. I did do that. And I need to fix this. And it was all kind of problems that came with it. I'm telling y'all, man, you're letting the devil in your house when you're letting the weed, lust, porn, fornication, adultery. You're letting it all run your house, run your life, run everything. And it's running you right into a grave. This is the reality of this stuff, man. It's just a little bit of pleasures for, for a little, uh, for eternity of hell. Burning and, 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 and if and if it should be nobody doing this stuff, we can't be of God and, and tell somebody, you know what, well, we're of God, we believe in Jesus Christ, and then we over here doing unholy things. That's not of God. People aren't stupid. They're going to know if you're smoking weed. They're going to know if you're drinking. They're going to know if you're lusting and por fornicating. They're going to know all this stuff. By the way you talk, you can't hide this stuff. Your mouth is going to speak what your heart is saying. Is What is inside your heart. He's going to speak out of it. Can't hide this stuff. What's wrong with people? If we go to Proverbs 23. We're back on the alcohol because I want to make sure we get that understood. Because I drank alcohol my whole life. I was drinking old Englishes, liquor, all that crazy stuff. I was drinking before noon sometimes. I was playing poker every other day, going to these casinos. Um, I was doing all the wrong things in life. I, another thing, oh, I want to address that too. Ain't nobody should be out there gambling. Man, I ain't never won nothing gambling. I always lost everything I, uh, uh, on, on that. And, I, and then um, when I did win something, I went right back to it because the devil kept calling me back to pl play it again. So uh, God taught me that real quick. And I, and I, and I still was disobedient because I still went to the casino and said, you know what, Lord, I want to at least try. You know, I don't know. I can't find nothing in the casino that say that, but uh, I can't be in the casino. So I was, I was just trying to justify sin. And that's what we do. We like to justify sin. You know what I'm saying? And that's what the lukewarm Christians do. They justify sin. Because they sin in themselves. It says, uh, Proverbs 13, 11. A wealth gotten by vanity, pride, shall be diminished. But he that gathered by labor shall increase. So, that crap about gambling, trying to get fast money, I just ruined everything of that. Ain't no so you can't be gambling. That's what it's saying right here. Shouldn't be playing no lotto, no none of that stuff. Saying Proverbs 28, 22, it said, he that he hasted to be rich, a desire to be rich. Have an evil eye. That's what God is telling you. And consider not the poverty that shall come upon him. 
Man, the devil only offers money and wealth and all this crazy stuff. And somebody was telling me, well, Solomon was rich. Well, Solomon was king, which came with rich. God blessed him to be king. Joseph was a uh, 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 blessed with because he was to bring his uh, uh, his family that sold him out of slavery uh, uh, to uh, to a better better life. So God uses us sometimes to bring His kind of ways into stuff. But Solomon fell big time. He had six hundred wives, six hundred wives, three hundred concubines. And he made other guys, and then all them women that he was with, all them women turned him into a, a turned him over to other gods, and he was worshiping other statues like they doing in the Catholic churches, or like the Hindus are doing, or like the Buddhists are doing, serving other gods and falling away from the only God of Israel, the one that one the one God of Jacob, Israel, Joseph, uh, 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 Job, Noah. Uh, Moses, John the Baptist, all these men uh, left them away from and served these idols. So when you have money, these certain things come with it. It's terrible things. Women throw themselves at you. Man, these rappers and all these crazy people, these uh, rock musicians and all these uh, other things that are rich, these celebrities, they get tempted with the devil 24-7 and they always go into it because it's an easy, uh, easy, uh, if somebody, if, if a woman offer a man sex, a pretty woman offer the man sex, he going to take it 99.9% .9 of the time. That's how superficial we are and also I just showed you what we care about. So, again, we're not talking about uh, uh, men of God, we're talking about people that are, uh, 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 that are, uh, 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 that, are, that, that don't have God, that don't really care about God, because they got money. Why would you need God if you got money? You don't need God for anything. But, um, what was I going to? Proverbs 23. Just discussing alcohol. God just... God talks about alcohol. Don't think he don't talk about alcohol. Now, wine, uh, uh, he does give you a, a, uh, a way to, uh, if your stomach is sick or your you have a stomach problems, you're able to have a teaspoon of wine. Not to get drunk, not to get tipsy. It, 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 it's able to soothe the, uh, the uh, not a glass of wine, uh, 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 a tablespoon of it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, 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 if somebody who is sick or is ready to die, God says, go ahead and give them some wine. So that they, you know, because you're going through all kinds of stress of dying. Man, think of, I, I've been through that time. When you don't know if you're going to live or die, man, you got, I mean, it's so so many things going on in your head. It's unbelievable. There's times where I broke down in the hospital. I'm talking about just broke down. And I'm a strong man. I broke down because I didn't know if I was going to die tomorrow. I didn't know what was going on. Because they kept feeding me all these drugs. I couldn't even think straight. So, um, it's just one of those things. Uh, uh, you you want to be sober because you don't want your devil to kill you. This, um, God requires it. I'm going to show you right here too. Uh, Proverbs 23, uh, chapter 23, and we'll start at verse 29. It says, Woe, uh, who have woe? Who have sorrow? This is God asking the question. Who have who have problems? Who got sorrows? Who have contentence? Contentence. I can't say the word. C O N T N E N T I L N. Contentions. Who have babblings? Who have wounds without cause? Who have redness of the eyes? We all know that drinking and smoking weed. And all them other drugs, they, they pills, they all dilute the eyes to red. So that's how you know somebody's not sober. God knows that. Who have redness of the eyes? He's asking. Thou that tarry. Uh, I was looking up that word tarry yesterday. I totally forgot. I got a blame fart. Let's look it up real quick. I think it means here. Let me look it up.
Hold on one second, y'all. I got AT&T. Don't ever get AT&T. You're going to be disappointed every time. I'm telling y'all. It delayed. So it's a delay. Thou that delay long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it grieveth its color in the cup, when it moveth itself out aright. Meaning you, it, it, God is kind of putting two and two together. When it moves itself aright. At, and at the last, it bite it like a serpent. God is describing the wine as being drunk as a serpent biting you. And stingeth like an adder. Scorpion. Then I shall behold strange women. Meaning you're gonna, your eyes is going to wander. It's going to follow after strange women. Naked women. Uh, half this uh, uh, instead of your wife. It's going to make you want to lust. This is when the devil attacks. And thy heart shall utter perverse things. People that are drunk start uttering kind of crazy things in their mind. God, is, God knows these things. It's not a question you my God that God don't have an answer for in this Bible. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea. Now he's describing what are you gonna what it's gonna be like. Thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea. Kind of like being seasick. Telling you're gonna be sick. Lying in the sea and all of a sudden that boat rock. And you get all of a sudden you get seasick, you start throwing up. So what are you describing? What you when you're doing that when you're drinking. He already knows that. And or as he that lie upon the top of a mast, they are stricken me. Shout they say, and I and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. You ever been beaten like you've been drinking? You wake up the next day, you feel like you've been beat by three uh, three different people at the same time. God knows the effects of this stuff. Beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? You don't even want to wake up because you're drunk and, and you hang over. I will seek it yet again. Saying you're going to seek this again to get away from the hangover. Still going to do it. After you done thrown up, I had a man tell me one time and i never forget it. It was an older man and, and I was a young kid at the time. And I was drinking my life away. And he told me specifically, he said, you know, all drinking is is just peeing and, uh, peeing and drinking, peeing and drinking, peeing and drinking. I said, well, you know what? You're right. Because after I drink, I got to pee. And then I drank again, and then I got to pee. And it just over and over again. That's all it is, just drinking and peeing, drinking and peeing. Well, I had enough of all that. I found God, y'all. I found Jesus. I don't need to drink no more. I don't get them urges no more. I don't want to be unsober. I had hurt in my heart. You know, I grew up without a father. You know, I had to forgive him for the things he did for, did to me and my family. I had to forgive others for what they did to me. You know? If you, do, if you ain't forgiving people, you're going to keep this certain things hating your heart. Forgive people. Get rid of it. Get rid of that hurt that's, that's deep down in there. That's the only reason why you're doing these certain things. And you can live with all this out this stuff. You don't need this stuff. It's the devil in your mind telling you you need this stuff. God ain't never told nobody not to be sober. If he say be sober, I mean uh, be sober and be vigilant, uh, uh, keep your mind away from all this stuff, why are you not being sober? Why are you taking pills? Why are you drinking? Why are you smoking? Why are you doing these things? You're defiling the temple of God. This is all, this is God made this body. Holy, not to be uh, uh, out there smoke. We know smoking, again, common sense. Smoking affects the lungs. Drinking affects the liver. All you're doing is hurting your liver. All you're doing is hurting your lungs. All you're doing is hurting your body, the same body that God gave you to live in. If we go to, uh, let's go to that verse real quick. 
Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. One Corinthians chapter three, uh, verse sixteen through seventeen. This is God speaking. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, the temple of God. This is the temple of God, y'all, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. The Spirit that uh, the Spirit that we have came from God. That's in the body. And if any man this is God speaking. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. It's only by the grace of God that we are not dead and in hell from all these things that we didn't did to this body. God is a merciful God. He'll allow us enough time to get right. But there will be no excuses come judgment day. You're going to answer to every one of them things. Turn from this crazy stuff. Turn from your weed, masturbation, porn, fornication. Don't think that they're just talking about, uh, uh, God's talking about weed, alcohol, drink. He's talking about fornication. He's talking about adultery. He's talking about all the lust of the flesh. This temple is supposed to be holy, not to be unholy. God said, uh, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Man, everything was made by God. This is all God. We're destroying God when we destroy our bodies. If we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 through 20. It's repeating itself. What? Asking the question. What? This is it's talking about fornication. You know, let's go up one um it, Oh, here we go. Let's let's go up to uh verse 15. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? God, members of God, Christ is God. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ? Uh, shall I make the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Meaning a whore? God forbid. He said, God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, say he, shall be one flesh. Meaning you marry, uh, when you're doing this stuff with fornicating and you're committing adultery, you becoming two people. Uh, uh, say right here. Shall be one flesh. Man say in the Bible, evil communication corrupt, good manners. Same thing we hear. For two he said, well, shall be one flesh. But he that is joining to the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication, God says, verse 18. Flee it. Flee this stuff. Flee it while you still got breath. Flee them drugs. Flee the alcohol. Don't take your time on earth as a, a, a time that for pleasures. Pleasures not going to be in this world. These pleasures in this world are going to send you to hell. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man do it, uh, doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. The body that God made. What? There you go quick. God asked me the question again. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not of your own. Uh, this live about to end in about 10, 15 seconds. Uh, We're going to go right back in this. I got still more things to talk about.